Okay, good morning everyone. My name is Jian Sang. I'm a PhD candidate here in uh, EC department at WashU. Uh, currently working on developing new kinetic theory models for random flow, which is a basic model to predict uh, the viscosities and solid pressure to solid phase, uh, if we simulate it as a continuous phase. And uh, my next plan is to implement this model into this existing software called Two Phase Wild Form in open form. So, well, I'm going to just uh, have the most uh, fundamental aspects of the solver to uh, not have any case uh, simulations. Uh, what I'm trying to do here is to just uh, answer two basic questions for any solver. What does it do and how does it do it? So, <clears throat> this two-phase world form um, is a very solver and based on the description from the source code is for a system of two compressible fluid phases with one phase dispersed. It's interesting to notice that this is drastically different from the previous world version, I mean, uh, before 2.3. Uh, in 2.2, uh, it is only for the system of two incompressible fluids, and it is only specifically designed for gas oil systems. That is, get, um, solid particles dispersed in gas or liquid and the ground in fluid heat transfer. So you can see here in the new, uh, newer version of open form, this is kind of completely designed to cover both incompressible and compressible with uh, including heat transfer. So uh, we can use it for fluid aspect simulation, bubble column, stir tank, and so on. So it is more robust, uh, more versatile. And I just introduced explain what kinetic theory models are. Although it is more like a transport model, which provides the viscosities, um, it is implemented as a turbulence model because their goal is the same, is to produce a um, kind of a viscosity. So this is very interesting, and this turbulence model is a new design framework, which I will, I will explain uh, later. So <clears throat> I, I want to provide this which the solver uh, used. Uh, these are not like officially documented. I cannot construct them from the source code and also based on my uh, knowledge uh, with this system. Uh, it's, it's completely different from the pre previous version because this, is, uh, this covers um, a compressible flow. So these continuity equations uh, contains both alpha and uh, alpha is the bottom fraction and density. But it's, it's also pretty simple. However, the implementation of this volume fraction solution is the most complicated, as I, I will show later. And the momentum equations, okay, it's also similar to the previous versions, but you can see there is a difference between these two equations. You see, uh, there's alpha in the second uh, equation, but no alpha in the first one. You may think it's a typo, but I um, type in this um, intentionally because uh, the first equation is for commercial solid system. Uh, because the way that kinetic theorem model does it, that it um, directly provides you with the effective stress tensor. So you do not have to multiply it with, uh, with alpha. If you multiply it, it will be wrong. And uh, uh, this difference is taken care of in the newer de design solver. Um, and notice that in the previous versions, uh, this alpha was included, which I believe was a mistake, and I am happy to see that this uh, issue has been solved. And also for the solid phase, we have this um, another pressure gradient, which is for the solid phase, it is about uh, the particle particle interaction pressure. So we, we need to resolve that term too. And the effective stress tensor, we well, well in that, and uh, these are some just uh, equations to calculate that, and uh, also we will have the interfacial momentum transfer, which are the interaction forces between the two fluids, or two, two phases, uh, including the drag force, the motion mass, lift, water lubrication, turbulence dispersion, and so on. The most important one uh, is the drag force. And I, I just uh, put the energy equation here and uh, uh, kind of just construct it from the code. And the, the, this solver uh, can solve the energy using a generic HE term, H standing for enthalpy, E standing for internal energy. You can choose which.
each equation to use during one time. And this equation have checked the least true of equipment. Okay, and uh, uh, this is solved for the entropy and kinetic energy. And then uh, this energy flux factor, uh, this model exists. This is a well known model, right? And this total dependent number is expressed as to one. So um, this energy equation, the implementation is very straightforward. So I'm gonna, uh, this is all I have to say about that. So let's take a look at uh, the source file because we want to know how these models are implemented. So this source file, uh, the software, what it, what it does is that it first solves for the volume fraction. It fluid up solve, provides a solution for the volume fraction. And then it corrects the, the diameter if it's gas solvent, gas liquid system, and so on. And then it recurs U equation, which constructs the momentum equation, but it does not solve it. Okay. And uh, then it solves the energy equation, and later on it constructs the pressure equation based on a combined continuity equation, and then uh, it corrects the, the, the velocity. You get it's not do the work correct. The velocity is not predicted. The velocity is directly solved based on pressure. And then the last step is to cal calculate the, um, the turbulent viscosity. Okay, so the first step is to solve for volume fraction. Um, it use, this is like a core code to solve that. It uses a, um, something called MIMS, it's pretty solved, MIMS stands for. Um, multi-dimensional universal linear circle expected solution. I think <laughs> as pretty long word, but what it does is that it solves a convective equation in completely explicit form. It treats us the, the fluxes explicitly, and the first argument is uh, for density, and here it is one. So what this tells us that actually solves for an equation without density. So the density term must have been decoupled from volume fraction, and uh, you know, everything relating to density is moved to the right hand side, so we need to do that. And uh, it includes uh, using the flux for the volume fraction, and uh, we have the source terms SP and SU. So we need to uh, you know, implement this, and this SP and SU, uh, SP is initial initialized at zero, SU initialized at the divergence of flux multiplied by alpha one. So it is very interesting or very confusing in the beginning um, because SP and SU are implemented based on some term called DGDT and it is called dilatation field. Um, and so from this code, we can see that SP, the source the source is just the DGDT plus this divergence of U times alpha 1. Okay, and there are two uh, implementations which are equivalent. Uh, this trick manipulation is just to ensure a negative SP you know, to improve the diagonal dominance. So anyway, this source term has to be um, this DGDT plus it. This is how DGDT is defined. So we manipulate the continuity equation, we separate alpha and density, and this is the source term, and DGDT must be this source term minus you know, this divergent term. That's how they define. But why do they do that? Well, what does DGDT mean? So if we do some following um, combination between these two equations, we add them together, the first two terms add to Zero because alpha one plus alpha two is constant, and uh, u one alpha one plus u two alpha two is the combined flux, combined with velocity. So the left hand side is divergence of velocity. I put this box here to remind me to tell you that this is the equation that is used to construct pressure equation. This is a combined continuity equation. It's actually very important, and uh, uh, we will later see that. So then we can do a, a more trick, this divergence velocity multiplied by one, 
was multiplied by alpha 1 plus alpha 2, combine the terms with alpha 1 and the terms with alpha 2. These two terms, these two on right hand side, right hand side, are equivalent, and that is the definition of DDT. Now it has more the basic meaning here. Okay, so but uh, we know that how we define uh, the implementation is very different if you look at the, the pressure equation. So far, it is uh, calculated here it is alpha 1 times something 2 minus alpha 2 times something 1. Um, it's very confusing in the beginning, but if we do some more manipulation on the equation, we extract the common term that represents our velocity here, and then we extract DGDT, and we can have this form of the DGDT. And now they, they match each other. This is alpha 1 times something 2 minus alpha 2 times something 1. So uh, as you read it, um, it's the code and this equation are matched together. So we solve the mystery of what this DGDT is and how it is calculated. Now let's go back to the continuity equation. We have temporal term, convection source. Uh, one more thing to notice is that this uh, convective flux it is actually um, calculated in a different way. Although it is mathematically it is U1, but it, it is um, constructed using a more conservative flux, which is a overall flux, the U and the derivative flux. So this U1 is actually calculated using this method. Right? The, the first term is this U and the second term, uh, you know, second block is for this second term. And uh, the second term, the uh, interpretation of alpha 1 is based on the negative of relative flux because there is a negative sign here. So you see here, um, there is a negative sign here. Okay, so we have we have the flux, we have the uh, the source, and let's take a look at the, this mu. What it does, it first calls the function uh, limit. Okay, this limit function it limits the convective flux. It uses this uh, flux limit. It calls the limiter function to return the flux limiter. Um, and what it does is that it provides a lower order flux, and then it limits the difference between this lower order, which is bound, which gives you a bounded solution, and the, the, the higher order. Right? So you return this limiter, and you limit this difference. So in this way, this, um, this step is done to improve the boundedness of our convection. And then after this, call this another overloaded, um, it's very soft to solve it. The, the equation itself is pretty simple because um, since the, the flux is treated explicitly, it's just uh, calculated by a surface integrate, right? And we have this, and then after um, you reorganize it, we have this alpha one. So it is an algebraic equation instead of solving, um, you know, having to solve a, for a linear algebra. Okay, so, so the, the last thing I want to talk about. Um, this volume fraction solution is that uh, there's something more to be done for the solid phase um, because as we mentioned earlier, the solid phase has its own pressure gradient and uh, if you do this, UMP is the A operator of the velocity equation. You just do this and uh, this gradient pressure 1, uh, we can uh, calculate by this dp1, the alpha 1 times the gradient alpha 1. <coughs> So this is dp1, the alpha 1 is the um, um, called p prime in here. Um, then we have some new flux, combined flux and relative flux. Okay, the reason this is done is that if we take the divergence of the velocity, if, if we do that, then we can see here we have constructed a Laplace term. The Laplace term gives us a more diffusive behavior, which also improves the boundedness. So this is actually the, the equation for alpha 1 that is solved. Okay, so enough about volume fraction. Um, then we go to the, the momentum equation. As I said, it is not solved. It's only constructed you know, based on this, e this equation. And it's just that the, the, fault, the last line, the term in the brackets are not included here. But 
actually something that we're familiar with. That is, we have a momentum equation. We have um, we, we have its semi-discretized form. So a1 u1 is equal to h1 minus a whole one gradient pressure. What we want to do is that we want to construct an equation for pressure. So we can you know divide u1 p into p and then multiply it by alpha one here and alpha two here. When we add them together, perhaps we combine the flux, take the divergence, then we have uh, constructed our pressure equation. This is a pressure equation that is used in this two physical form. Okay, so it is a, a Gaussian equation for pressure, and we use the com combined continuity continuity equation that I have mentioned earlier. Okay, and it solves this um, this three uh, so these three parts combined together give us this equation and we solve that and then it corrects after having the conservative pressure it calculates the fluxes and the flux state and so on. So the, the last thing I want to mention is uh, this multi-phase turbulence model which is new newly designed in is 2.3. Uh, before 2.3, um, there are four framework for incompressible, compressible, for single system, single phase and multi phase system. There are, there are lots of code duplication there. And here we have a, uh, a general, a new, a single template determinist model which takes care of these four um, different structures. And although currently we have only a limited number of turbulent small turbulence models under this framework, but you know, as I said, there is an expectation that it can combine everything, replace uh, the traditional single phase turbulence model. So um, I, um, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Uh, I just uh, I just provide a kind of a um, hierarchy, the uh, inheritance tree for the turbulence model. There are different base models. And the, the, the central class is this template class, this capital T. And uh, we have, so, so, so the lower line, um, the lower rows are inherited from the upper rows. And then the, the K epsilon for the gas phase, for example, is inherited from every star phase. And, and so on. This is for the gas, the, the traditional way to model turbulence. Uh, and for the solid phase, as, as I explained um, earlier, since it also solves for some kind of viscosity, it is implemented as a counterpart as k epsilon equation here. It has a single, very different implementation, and, <clears throat> and also different um, solution method for, for the term that I mentioned earlier for the gas and liquid phase, you have this alpha term inside that divergence, uh, inside that, uh, that equation. Um, this is kind of, this is in the added viscosity. And since kinetic theory is, is inherited from this class, you can redefine, you can overload that, and you see for this overloaded version, it has no alpha. So that difference is taken care of using this. Um, I think it's a, a brilliant way to do that. Okay, um, I just